In this session, we are going to take a look at three main important things in information security. And these are identification, authentication, and authorization. These three concepts are very important in information security. If you're taking a certification exam, then you need to understand not only the concepts, but how they are different from each other. Because there are big differences between these two, three uh, concepts. To try to help you with this, let me try to help you imagine this. Now picture this. You are driving along the road on a bright sunny day and suddenly you hear the siren of a policeman behind you and the policeman pulls you over. So he parks his car behind you and take a walk right down to where your car is parked. So the first thing he asks from you is to identify yourself. So you reach out and pull out your uh, identity in the form of a driver's license. So this identity is a form of identification, but the identity is not proven. So the policeman is not sure if this driver's license is real or not. We call that unproven identity. So what needs to happen is the policeman needs to carry out what we call identity proofing. That is the first step. So what he does is take a look at it, try to compare the image on the driver's license with what he's seeing right there. Now, if he's convinced that you are the one in the, on the picture of the driver's license, he might think, okay, this is good enough, you can go if there is no other offense uh, that you have committed. Well, it is a bit more complicated than that because the policeman needs to be sure that you are really who you say you are. So what you have done in this first step is to assert an identity. So it's an unproven assertion of an identity, what, what you have done. Now the next step is to verify if you are really who you say you are. That process is what we call authentication. Now the policeman takes the driver's license, walk back to his car, and punch your uh, name and uh, driver's license detail into the computer and see what comes out. The computer says, oh, this person is who he says he is. At that stage, your identification has been verified and is authenticated. So now let's take it to the computer environment. These three processes are still going to apply. But the first one is identification. You need to identify yourself to the system. That you do by providing a username and a password. Now, the computer is going to try to verify if this username and password is authentic. That means it is from you. And the only way to do this is to verify this with an existing information that is stored somewhere in the computer system. This existing information is a list of users and uh, password that is encrypted and stored in a safe location in a computer environment. When this comparison is made and it is found out that uh, you are really who you say you are, then you are granted an, uh, an authorization to access the system. This authorization can be from the ability to open a file to start up some program and do a lot of things within a computer environment. However, the story I just told you uh, has some loopholes. Now, how does the computer really know that you, who you are the one you say you are? So, if you have my password and user name, you could as well go and log on to the same system pretending to be me. There's no way that a computer system can tell the difference between uh, you and I if you're using the same username and password to log on to the system. So that is where we take the process a little bit further in, in, in this technology. Now that brings us to what we call the authentication methods. We have different forms of authentication methods. The first one we've just talked about is what the user knows, which is the user ID and a password. What a user knows is not a very, very strong way of authentication because, like I said, 
uh, the information that I know can be transmitted to somebody else and somebody else can as well uh, use the same information to log on to the computer environment. So that is not a very, very strong authentication method. Um, another method that we often use in information security is what the user has. Now what the user has has to do with something like a smart card or a token. You, you must have seen this and probably use them as well. A token is, can be also in form of a smart card that you have in your possession. And if you are working in an environment where it is secure, you need a smart card to come into the office every morning. So you take the swipe as uh, the smart card, swipe it through uh, on the uh, swiping machine right next to the door, and then the door is open. That's the only way you can get access to your computer environment. So that is what you have. Again, what you have is um, not a very, very strong form, form of authentication on its own because if I take your smart pass from you or a smart card from you, I can use a smart card to come into the building pretending to be you. I can also, also access the computer system pretend, pretending to be you. So that does not uh, work too well. The last one we have is what the user is. Okay, so the next part is actually who you are. Now, when we talk about who you are, we talk about things like biometrics. For example, your fingerprint. These days, uh, if you have a passport, most passports are equipped with biometric information. So uh, if, if you come to a passport control, they swipe your passport and you have to put in your fingerprint to really prove that you are the person who you say you are and that is uh, seen immediately on the computer screen so you are authenticated. Now, there are other forms of biometrics, for example, your iris can be used as a form of uh, authentication. You can also use your, your facial uh, uh, format as a form of uh, authentication and also voice handwriting, and all of this. These are all various forms of authentication in information security world. Now, as I've just discussed with you, you have what the user knows, what the user has, and what the user is. So these are the three main components of authentication methods. However, there is another aspect on this. Many of these authentication methods, if you are using them on their own, they are not that 100% that, uh, effective. So what you need to do is combine one or two of these authentication methods. The combination of one or two of uh, authentication methods is what we call the multi-factor authentication method. That means that, for example, you are going to combine the username and password with a smart card. Okay? or you are going to uh, combine the username and password with the fingerprint or with uh, facial recognition. So if you are combining one or two of these methods, then we say you are using a multi-factor authentication. So these are things you need to remember and uh, they're very important for your information security uh, examination if you're taking a certification program. Now, let's do a recap of what we've just studied. The first thing I told you is the concept of identification. Identification is an assertion of identity where a user comes and says, I am that, 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 and that. But if that is not believable, then there is a process of authentication. Authentication is to verify that the person is who he says he is. After the authentication process, then we have authorization. If a user has been authenticated, then he is authorized to make use of the system. Now, we also talk about the fact that there are three main types of authentication methods. We have what the user knows, which is like a username and password, what the user has, which is uh, like smart cards and token, and what the user is, which is mainly uh, biometric information of the user. Now. If you want to have a, a much more stronger authentication and uh, identification process, you need to combine some of these things together. 
and that is what we call multi-factor authentication. So I hope you understand what we've just talked about, and this is great stuff. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care, and see you then.